M157 today today it's Thursday February 23rd 2023 now what do I have what do we have here we have a sleeved M157 dart on sleeves all right classic and we have a bone stock 280,000 kilometers not sleeved it didn't have any problem it didn't have a catastrophic failure it didn't have bent connecting rods it's just one used M157 out of an E63 Formatic 2014 with 280,000 kilometers 170,000 miles I think yeah I believe that's somewhere there 170 175,000 miles now <clears throat> like I said no bend connecting rods no problem not whatsoever what was suffering this engine there was a misfire and the timing chain was being stretched there was a fault with the timing chain, with the timing, all right, because it was stretched. It was at more than four, more than five degrees, and there was some misfire. Fine. Now, let me show you something before I continue. Dial board cage. It's been calibrated at 98 millimeters, all right. Just I'm gonna show you on this block. I have removed the torque plate, obviously, so it's not gonna be. 98 just still gonna be a couple of thousand of millimeters plus minus probably all right so this earlier when i checked this block it was fine so this one it's shit it's not focused now this shit all right here you see that need a couple of thousand of millimeter to reach at zero that means that means it's a little bit greater than 98 by a couple of thousand millimeters, right? That was which cylinder was that? This is one, two, th the, th the second cylinder. Let's go to the third cylinder. There, all right. Third cylinder. Yeah, similar. All right. Again, it's missing the torque plate. All right. The, the point is to see that the dial board cage it's been calibrated because. The things what we're gonna see on this blog will gonna be completely different. All right. Now with the torque plate, without the torque plate, it's even worse. Here to reach at zero point, I need two hundred of millimeter. All right. At this point, two hundred of millimeter. Like this, <clears throat> I need more than six hundred of millimeter. One second, one second to hold it properly straight. It's more than 700 millimeters, sorry. All right, makes sense what I'm saying, what I'm showing. Let me zoom out the camera. Yeah, like that, it might be better. I'm straight, yes, nah, shit. All right, second cylinder, more than 600, third, more than 700, it's greater, by the way, all right, and here, the <laughs> almost one ton of millimeter, almost, almost one ton of millimeter. So, just a second. Like this here, it's greater by more than 200 millimeter at this point. All right, and like this, it's almost almost one ten of millimeter. Dang it. Please note that I haven't touched the cylinders. The only thing what I have done on the cylinder, the only thing what I have done on the cylinder, it's here where is the lip up that had the carbon. I just clean it with a soft wire wool of a 3M with a little bit of a WD-40. A little bit WD-40, a little bit of the wire wool just to remove the carbon that has here on top where it's not stepping the, the piston. And the rest what you see there, it's oil. I just put some oil you can see down there the cylinder is dry 
and here up it's wet from oil only. Alright? And that's how it looks like. The same thing also from the other side. <coughs> All right, this is just just an oil, nothing, nothing more. Fine, you can see here out. Nice. So, what's my point? If it's running fine, the engine, do not open it. That's my point. If it's not misfiring and it's working fine, do not open it. Keep it as it is. By opening it and remove the carbon from the piston, all right. And you put a new piston rings, let us say. Here I didn't clean perfectly. All right, you see that it still has some carbon. By opening it and then closing back again, you didn't. You're not gonna do so many things. Even the carbon that has. Let me let me get out one other piston that has the carbon. I just remove the carbon from the top and from the side. Just just a second to grab another one. All right, this is the number seven. Fine. And you see there is some carbon all the way around, classic, especially here at this point. And there is also some carbon here. If you remove the carbon, uh, I want to see the comment section after that. If you remove the carbon, the, the carbon itself, it's working, let us say, as an extra material between the piston and the cylinder wall. All right. So on a cylinder that has so much run out, by removing it and putting a new pistons or cleaning, remove the carbon from the old pistons, put a new piston rings and put it back again, you're not gonna have a happy end. You didn't do nothing. With this kind of run out, this amount of run out, the piston rings they're gonna end up to be all in one position. The specific one is the number seven. Alright? You're gonna end up, you're gonna turn you're gonna end up in one position. You're not gonna seal properly. You have a round piston ring on an oval cylinder. Makes sense, right? Then if you're saying that, okay, we're gonna put a new piston, think about it. The run out that has, let us say, the piston and the cylinder number seven, as an example, this happened graduate in a depth of 280,000 kilometers, in a depth of 10 years, example. All right, nine years, all right, let's call it 10 to be round. Whatever run out has a, the piston, it's the same, similar, and happened together with the cylinder. So by opening it, cleaning it, and then getting the number seven piston, putting it on the number one, and the number one on the number six example, again you're not gonna have a happy end. It's it's gonna be half job. It's not gonna be right. So that's why you have a high mileage engine and you have this kind of cylinder wall that you cannot touch it. You cannot do nothing there. Obviously. Leave it as this. Continue driving does this until it comes the time that it's misfiring, it's consuming oil or whatever. Now, to change the timing chain, yeah, makes sense. To change the uh, current from bearings, has some main bearings, yeah, maybe, probably, for some people, I don't know. Or to fix the cylinder heads up, the valves, uh, lap the valves, let us say, it change the valve seals. The valve guides are not suffering in these engines, they are very rare to have a problem, all right, but again. Whatever has to do with the cylinder and piston, my advice on the high mileage engine, do not attempt. Don't, you're going to see, you might have a piston rattling by just only removing the carbon or by mixing up the pistons, by placing in a different position. If you get some measurements, I have shown you that before, I have this, this piece 3D printed. This is not something crazy, I'm using this one just to measure all the pistons on the same position, all right? You just put this small hole in the center, you're pushing it full down, and then you're getting it all together, and you put it on the micrometer here to measure it, all right? On a specific position all the time. If you get your measurements, and then you get the measurement from the cylinder, then you can see it makes sense. And if you do that, like, I'm saying, like I've said before, if you have done this on an engine that's a brand new, on a 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000, 150, 100, 200,000 kilometer engine. That means when you are opening the engine, you're not just, you're not just throwing parts here and there, but you're getting informations. It's going to be very useful, especially if you're dealing always with this kind of engines. You're going to see the wear. You're going to tell me 
Some people, they have a stage one or stage two tune. Don't ask me what's the difference. Okay, now there are how many stages? Uh, some other guys, they have a turbo upgrade. Some other guys are using 040. Other guys, 540, 1060. So you are getting it. You are gathering as many informations as possible. It's helpful, at least for me. You know what's happening. So, once again, trying to close the engine with this run out on the cylinders, yes, you can uh, clean it. You can uh, close it, sorry. Yes, it will gonna run. I don't know how long, I don't know what kind of effects we're gonna have, because, like I said, definitely there will gonna be some piston, ring, uh, piston rattling. Defin definitely the piston rings are not gonna have a happy end inside of this cylinder with almost a 10 of millimeter run out, like an egg, all right? And you have a soft cylinder wall. You're gonna tell me you have low friction piston rings. Yep. So, because of this, either you're gonna sleeve it, or you're gonna make a seal coating. I don't know what's worth it. The sleeves, they never disappointed me. They never fail, if you're asking me. Okay, I didn't have any problem with the sleeves. Never, ever. Okay. Now the Nikasil, we're gonna see how we're gonna end up this story. Because I have two blocks that are on the machine shop and they're measuring it. Because when I measured it, it was all over the place. But like I said before, I, I might be wrong, right? Yeah. So, that's it. Anything else? Nothing more, nothing less. The cranks, I think, was straight. It was not being bent, it was, didn't have anything, any problem. It was zero. I sent for polishing. I can use the crank. Not on this engine as it is right now. All right. That's what I have to say. I hope that I cover you. It's... What are you going to do? I, once again, even if you change only the piston rings, you remove the carbon, you change the piston rings, and you put again the pistons on the same position where it was, when it was running. All right? What's here? What's sitting there is people also. You see that you have a wear on the piston. So you're gonna say, okay, screw it, I'm gonna put eight new pistons. You're gonna spend money to buy eight new pistons to put it on a cylinder that has a 10 of a millimeter run out. That's like an egg. It doesn't make any sense. How, however, you're gonna see that, it does make any sense. You're not just, you're not, just not bothering with that. You, maybe it's stretch the timing chain and you want to give one shot to the engine to last a little bit longer. You change, let us say, the timing chain. You have to change the fuel injectors, obviously. You cannot trust them at 300,000 kilometers. <laughs> Ignition coils, most probably. All right. High pressure pumps, maybe. Bearings. And then you still have the run out in the cylinders. That's why I'm saying all the time, balance it. How much costing, let us say, one low mileage used engine? How much costing one brand new engine? Because you can find MO57 with 100 kilometers, 120 kilometers, 80 kilometers. It's existing, it's available. So balance it and see what's the difference. What's, uh, how much money you're going to spend on something that it will not going to be like new one. And once again, to the guys here outside, because I owe something, this doesn't mean that's new. It's just been clean. When when you're washing, let us say, when somebody washing his car, he's not making new car. He, it's just been washed to see with what you have to deal with. And that's it. It's different to be on specs and to be okay, and different to be just cleaned. Fine? The, this, the, the pistons that you see that does have a carbon, let us say, on the top, this doesn't mean that's a new piston. This is used piston with a run out all right you see on the skirt that's been polished at one spot here and less on this point so yeah that's what i have to say i hope that you understand for your uh, for your pocket for me it is what it is you cannot go wrong if if you get pen and paper if you get the tools all right, and like I said, you calibrate your tool. You put it here at 98 millimeters. You're, you have a reference, let us say, from another engine. 
All right, that this being measured at the machine shop. And they found it with the same numbers that I found here. And I'm repeatable. That means if I if I measure, let us say, the number four cylinder 10 times, 10 times I see that I have 900 millimeter to almost one ten of millimeter right now. Like this, you know what you have in front of you. Otherwise, if you don't get the measurement, you'll get close it, everything, and then you're gonna scratch your head. You're gonna say, ah, 50-50 chances. It might work, it might not work. Yes, definitely. Because you don't know what, what's happening. Hold on, I make myself clear. That's it. Have a good day. Let me continue. What stupid title are we gonna put on this video? Yeah, we're gonna figure it out. Thank you.